Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a brand new pack from VanQuest, which is the Falconer 27. Some uh, overall specs of this pack, it's going for $186.99, that's US. This is the wolf gray color option. The bag is constructed out of 1000D Cordor nylon, and it is hydration compatible. Let's start by looking at the back of the pack. Got load lifters on each strap, which is a really nice feature. I really appreciate that on packs. Here you have then just a hook and loop loop, which you can use for the tube of your hydration bladder should you decide to use one. You got a D-ring right here, moving down. Just some more nylon right here that creates loops. Looking at the sternum strap, you do have an integrated whistle right here. A little elast elastic material right there for comfort when you're wearing it. It's a really nice feature. And on the bottom of each shoulder strap, you do have a quick release buckle and strap keeper on the end of those. Looking at the back of the pack, have some nylon, some padded, uh, excuse me, mesh material with some foam in there, it feels like. This pack does have a hip belt <clears throat> and it is removable. It's being held in there with some hook and loop. You can hear that, right? Take that off if you want it. Features the same sort of two-handed necessary action to release the, the hip belt buckle. I'm not a huge fan of using two hands for this, but sort of a VanQuest signature. I did mention this bag was hydration compatible. So while we're still on the back of the bag, you have the zipper track, which is reversed. These are all YKK zippers on here. And reverse meaning that you can see the track is covered, which is nice to help keep out debris and water. So when I open that up, you can look inside here, and this is where the hydration bladder would be. You do have a hook and loop field inside here on sort of the, the back of the bag. And then throughout this bag, this thinner material that I'm touching right now is, I think they're 210D ripstop nylon. Coming through where I was just showing you, where the hydration bladder goes in the tube will thread through here. You can put it on each shoulder strap, whatever one you pr prefer. Looking at the side of the pack, they are both the same, so I'm just gonna show you one. You do have a compression strap right here. And you do have some webbing right here if you wanna attach a pouch or anything. I personally prefer bags with water bottle pockets and if you do as well, you, pro you can attach a water bottle carry to side if you want. Like I said, both sides are the exact same. Webbing here, compression strap. At the top of the bag, you have a real cool feature to help secure the zipper pulls. And that's a real, a real strong snap on that. It's kind of nice in an urban setting if you're wearing this uh, on a bus, public transportation, anything like that, and you have your you know, people on your back. It's kind of cool. All right, let's get into actually the pockets now. So you have one right here that I'm holding, hook and loop field right here, some bungee with a cord lock, Singer, si single zipper pull on that, excuse me. Let's have my head, headlamp floating in there, kerchief. Let me show you what this pocket looks like. Got one there, on the opposing side you have one as well. And then just some elastic material right there in the form of some webbing. And the theme of this pack is it is ridiculously organized in a good way. There are so much you can put in this bag and ways to organize it because this is sort of built as a bug out bag, sort of like that, so it makes sense. Moving down from that pocket, on the outside of this one, you have two zippers here and they just, you know, it's a pass through. So you can just use one side if you want. Getting into that pocket, zippers the whole way. On this side of it, you have this sort of ladder. And I just have a few examples in there to show exactly how this system sort of works. The bungee here. And you can see all the organization again. Pass behind pocket, little key keeper. This is a three layer design here, here, and here. There's sort of three compartments. So getting into the second one, I'm gonna undo the compression straps, lay this puppy down. You can see that fillets the whole way open. 
I just have a little VanQuest pouch in there floating for now. I don't have this bag packed to the max because there's so much you can put in there, but you have one pocket here, it stops at the bottom of this sort of clear clear mesh. And there is almost like a, there's a plastic lining behind that. So it's not just mesh. It's probably, you're not gonna be able to pick it up. Maybe the sheen will, but there's plastic behind that, which is kind of cool. And you have the same type of pocket below it, just larger. And there I just have walkie floating, waterproof one. You see some hook and loop here, tube it running here. You can actually go underneath this pocket as well. You can see my hand disappear. You can potentially get something to hold, you know, something with a handle or, or a larger item and sort of tuck it under here if you desire. It's kind of cool. And you have another pocket here, which uh, silky, silky saw is floating in right now. Hook and loop closure on that. It's pretty cool. Since we're on the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of webbing right here and here, so you could, you know, attach something to the bottom of it if you desire. Before I forget, I want to show you the zippers on well, the pocket I just showed you, the second layer. You can see there's overlapping eyes on these, so you can lock them if you want with a small lock. Let's see those overlapping. Now into the third layer of this pack, and you do have a larger zipper and zipper track on this main compartment, and you can see this sort of same feature as the zippers just show these overlapping eyes if you want to lock this up and these really big rubberized zipper pulls and again this layer completely flays open which is just really nice it really is so I just have a hammock tarp straps water bottle and shell in here right now and because this is a three layer design and being built as a 27 liter some of those leaders are being taken up with each layer, so you don't have one large main compartment. You can see on the opposing side of this where my gear was, big hook and loop field in here as well. Open up that flap, pass underneath this, and there's another one on this side as well. Pass underneath this. You can see again a big hook and loop feel, then you have webbing running this way. You crisscross something in there to help, you know, keep stuff in place. Hook and loop on this side, hook and loop on this side as well. And at the top here, you have this loop for hanging your bladder, and that's underneath here is that pocket I showed you on the back of the bag. So you could hang a bladder on the inside too if you wanted. And there is, you know, pass through again for your hose to come out. What's nice about these compression straps, they also act as sort of a zipper stop. So if you do want to get in the main compartment, sort of just use it as a dump, sort of a dump style pocket. This will keep the zipper from going down and my contents falling out. Pretty comfy. I just want to give my final, final thoughts and impressions on this bag. But you can see sort of that three layer design, how it kicks the bag sort of pretty far off my back because it's a narrower profile from this angle. See how it's kind of narrower? And then when I turn from the side, you can see it's really pushing off my back. And that's just, you know, the characteristic of the design of the bag. But one of the first things I really noticed about this bag and that I liked, maybe you felt the same way, was where's all the webbing on the outside? I like that. I like that there's no webbing. I like that it doesn't look really tactical. I really, really like that. It's one of the things I like about this bag. As I mentioned er earlier, I don't like that there's no integrated water bottle pockets, but that's not a surprise because most companies aren't doing that. So not a deal breaker. So a few things I do like about this bag. One, I mentioned that there's not a lot of webbing on the outside of it. So it makes it look more of a covert or gray man using those terms. All the constructions there that I would expect to see from VanQuest, the heavy duty material, you know, the, the, the same hardware they've always used, I mean, the plastic, all that really high quality, the stitching, everything's on par. And this is an expensive bag. 
it's right around there with, you know, the Maxpedition Falcon, I believe, you know, the $170, $190 mark. So it's kind of what you expect for, you know, industry and market. But if this is a really interesting pack, I think so. That pretty much sums up everything I have to say about the bag right now. I'd like to thank VanQuest for sending this bag over for us to test and evaluate and do this video for you. Remember, this is an overview video, just our initial impressions of the bag. And if you made it this far into the video, VanQuest has been kind enough to offer 5% off using the code BLACKOW for the month of July. So thanks again, VanQuest. If you have any questions about this bag, any experience with VanQuest or other sort of tactical bags that don't have the webbing, let me know. I'm always looking for packs like that. This is Crick signing out with Black Isle Outdoors. Later, turtles.